Hi, I'm Kevin Richard Holt, and welcome to Chops. Nice, eh? You can have a studio like that too through the magic of video editing. You know, when I first started trying to decide what I wanted to do with this blog and how I wanted to structure it, um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to make it uh, more heavy on the side of technique and drum instruction and education, or whether I wanted to be more general and, and talk about uh, drumming from um, a philosophical and anecdotal an experiential standpoint based on my experiences and my opinions. I, I chose the latter because I just think that's more interesting. There's a million guys out there doing these instruction videos and technique videos and they do it much better than I do so I'll, I'll leave that to them. Occasionally I might put out a video where I, I show you how I play a song or I might do a play along version of a, of a cover song or maybe even of one of my original songs but for the most part I think it's more fun and more interesting if people also see the behind the scenes stuff about being a professional drummer, being a professional musician. And so that's really what I want to cover in this video blog. Okay, so what I want to relay to you is an experience that I had when I was younger, when I was just starting out as a, as a, a drummer playing in the clubs. Um, there was a thought that came to me one night when I was on stage. I was, I was playing with an all-original band, and the band was starting to make some noise in the area. We had uh, picked up a producer who was producing our recordings. We were, we were starting to record our first album. And uh, I didn't have a hand in writing any of the original material. All I did was play drums, and I basically played what I was told to play. I could put a little bit of my creativity in, but the uh, the uh, composer slash leader of the band had a certain way he wanted things, and me being young and impressionable, I didn't want to rock the boat. I figured the band was going to go somewhere and make make it big, and, and I just did what I was told. Then one night I was playing in a club, and actually during a song, the thought hit me that, you know, aside from what I'm going to make after this performance, I've got no plan for the future. I mean, the the songwriters are the ones that are going to make the royalties if it does anything they're going to get the residuals me i'm not going to get anything i'm just going to get paid what i'm getting paid for this show tonight and, and future shows so i started to plan you know my future i started to think about that a lot and that's really one of the things that that got me involved and got me started in writing my own music and composing my own music was that i knew that i had to control my future and my future income so this, this lesson is pretty much for the younger, inexperienced drummers and musicians out there. When you're working with a band and you start writing original material, I know it's a touchy subject to start talking about, you know, rights and, and things like that right off the bat, especially when you don't really know where the band's going to go or how far you're going to take things and how serious everyone else is. But you still have to think about your future. And if things work out, and if you wind up creating some really good music and someone picks it up, there's going to be residuals and royalties to think about, publishing rights, that kind of thing. Okay, a couple of sidebar issues that I need to mention here before we go any further. First of all, regarding producers, if you're lucky enough to be working with a producer, uh, the producer should not normally claim any percentage of copyrights to your music. They're hired to provide a service, which is produce. The song was written by you, and uh, it's, it's your intellectual property. So unless you include the producer as a co-writer, uh, they don't have any claim to the copyrights. You can't copyright drum parts. Uh, if you played a drum fill or a drum pattern in an original song, that doesn't constitute any kind of copyright ownership to that song. And third about writers. There's different types of writers. Some guys will be good guys. They'll be decent. They'll be more than willing to share a small piece of the pie, a small percentage of the copyrights with the rest of the band members because they, they recognize the contributions that they're making and, and sometimes sacrifice. But then there's the other guys that uh, they want the whole thing to themselves, whether it's for greed or, or for control or for ego, who knows what their reasons are, but they just don't want to give up any kind of percentage of copyright. And finally, if you can't 
have a, a written contract with your bandmates when you start doing original material. Sometimes it's not convenient or it's just too early. The band's just in the early stages. At least have a discussion with them about it. It's something you need to talk about so that uh, when it does become important, when the band does start to happen, you'll have uh, all, all the, everything on the table. So you won't have any gray areas uh, to wonder about. If you have any questions about the type of deal you're being offered or the type of deal you should pursue, you're best to consult a reputable entertainment lawyer. I wouldn't recommend anyone else other than an entertainment lawyer because they deal with this all the time, entertainment issues, copyrights, legalities, and they'll give you the best advice. Uh, it's not cheap. You have to pay for it like any other service, and you know lawyers, uh, but it's the best thing for you, and that's what's most important is getting the best thing for you. If you uh, plan to make music your living, your career, your vocation, uh, by all means, it's your responsibility to make sure that you get the best deal for yourself, particularly when it comes to original music and, and original creations. Uh, aside from publishing deals and residuals, there's also things to think about like record label uh, contracts and uh, management contracts and fees. So. Again, it's your responsibility to make sure you get the best deal for yourself. There's a little thing called negotiation, and you're perfectly entitled to negotiate your own deal. If you don't get a good deal, who else do you have to blame but yourself? If you're just playing drums in a cover band, then all of this is null and void. You don't need to worry about any of it. So uh, uh, by all means, whatever you're doing, uh, all the best to you. That's it for now. If you like what you've heard, if you've been able to get anything out of what I've said here, or uh, maybe you think I'm just full of hot air, tell me about it. Uh, post comments below. Uh, if you'd like to see me cover anything in this video blog, let me know about it. And by all means, follow me on Facebook and, uh, and Twitter and all the other media that's out there. You just got to Google my name and uh, check out my website at www.kevinrichard.com. And thanks again, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.